All right. Question two up here is a doozy. Um, so there's a lot to it. And actually, I think the hardest part about this question is actually understanding it and understanding the game. So we're going to spend significant time in this video um, just making sure that you understand the game. Uh, feel free to fast forward if you feel like you got have a pretty good grasp on what's happening with it. Um, and then I actually already wrote the code, um, so we won't necessarily spend time uh, watching me type, um, but I will go through the solution and through both solutions for part A and part B. So uh, in this, this is a coin game um, where you are actually, uh, this is a little bit interesting here, right here. So this line in the directions. So in writing solutions for each question, you may use any of the accessible methods that are listed in classes defined in the question, writing significant amounts of code that you can, that can be replaced by a call to one of these methods will not receive full credit. Um, so that basically says if you're doing more work than necessary, you're not going to get full credit for that. Um, so here's where efficiency is tested a little bit to make sure that you're using it um, and that you know how to use it. So we'll talk about that when we get down there, uh, but just want to point that out as we go through this question. All right, so this question involves a, simul a simulation of a two-player game. In the game, two sim simulated players each start out with an equal number of coins. In each round, each player chooses to spend one, two, or three coins. Coins are then awarded to each player uh, based on the following rules. So if we look at round number one, uh, player count is going to be 10. So, right, so this following is an example of a game played with a starting value of 10 coins and a game length of five rounds. So you'll see round one, and both uh, players have 10 coins to start with. So here, uh, players can choose between one, two, or three coins if they want, or they have to choose between one, two, or three. So in this case, player one spends two, and player two spends one. So the first thing that's going to happen is that they are going to subtract the amount that they just spent. So, right, so player one is going to lose two coins, and player uh, two is going to lose one coin. Uh, but then we have to also look at the result. So if I go here, it's going to be this rule right here, off by one rule. So if the players do not spend the same amount of coins and the positive difference between the number of coins spent by the two players is one, uh, which it is, right? Two minus one is that positive difference or that, here's a hint, absolute value difference is going to be one. Uh, then player two is awarded one coin. So you can see that player two loses one but then they also gain one because of that rule. So player one coin count is going to be eight. The player two coin count is going to be 10. All right, so the starting would be eight and 10, like I just mentioned. Okay, now player one spends two, player two spends two. Uh, so once again, the first thing that happens is that they each lose two coins. Okay. And then if I look here at same rule, so if both players spend the same number of coins, player two gains one coin. So once again, player two is then going to subtract two, but also add one to their coin total. Um, so that my new coin total is nine for player two, and the new coin total for player one is six. Uh, with another round of the game, uh, we have player one spends one, and player two spends three. Uh, once again, six minus one and nine minus three. Um, so off by two rule. Uh, so if the players do not spend the same number of coins and the positive difference between the number of coins spent by the two players is two, right? One minus three is negative two, but that positive difference is gonna be two. Uh, player one is awarded two coins. So in this case, six minus one, uh, but player one gets plus two here uh, to make seven. Um, and then player two just subtracts three and gets six. Um, so that's how the game works. Um, if you're off by one, um, if you have the same, um, and then if you're off by two. Uh, now the game's going to go either till one of these counts falls below three. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. Or until we've played the max rounds that we set up. Um, and remember in our directions, we said game length of five rounds. Um, and then it's going to print out a message uh, based on where we're at um, at the end of the game. So uh, the game ends when the specified, here we go. The game ends when the specified number of rounds have been played or when a player's coin count is less than three at the end of a round. So at least one player has to have um, less than three to end the game. It doesn't have to be both of them. Um, we have this class called the coin game. 
um, where we have a starting coins um, and we have a max rounds. These are instance variables. Uh, they are going to be variables that we can use when we code any method in this class. Um, so in our example, starting coins was 10 and max rounds was five. Uh, we have our constructor, uh, which is our starting coins and max rounds. And then we have some methods here. Um, and this is what we're talking about um, in the very beginning when it said, um, if you're given a class, then you have to use the methods inside it. And if you try to write too much code, you're going to get points docked, uh, which means you have to use these methods throughout your code. Um, you don't want to re redo any of these methods. So get player one move. Um, which it doesn't tell us what it is or how it works, but we know that it exists um, and we know that it functions correctly. Um, we have the uh, get player two move, uh, which this one does have a parameter. Uh, it's going to be based on rounds. Um, and this is what we are going to do in part A. Um, and then there's the play game method, uh, which is what we're going to do in part B of this. So part A is going to be to create this method. Uh, and part B is going to be to create this method. So we scroll down further to find more directions here, um, which is once again, that's, this is a lot, okay? Uh, which is why I just gave you one of these, but note that this is a valid AP question, right? There's a lot to some of these and just reading them and understanding them is half the battle. So in the simulation, player two will always play according to the same strategy. The number of coins player two spends is based on what round it is, as described below. Uh, so you're going to write the get player two move method, which returns the number of coins that player two will spend in a given round of the game. Uh, if the in the first round of the game the parameter round has the value one, in the second round of the game it has the value two, and so on. The method returns one, two, or three based on the following rules. So if round is divisible by three, then return three. If round is divisible by three. Uh, is not divisible by three, but it is divisible by two, return two. And if round is not divisible by three and is divisible by two, then return one. So we're going to complete the method get player to move um, based on though that information. Um, so here's our starter code that we have to include, uh, right? College board or the question gave us this. So we need to make sure that we use this um, in our code. So copy paste that, get started. Um, once again, either just type it down there or use REPL um, and then screenshot it and submit it um, or copy and paste it over. Either any of those options work well. Um, but go ahead and pause the video. Uh, when you come back, you are going to see the solution to this one. But give it a shot uh, to get started to see how you do. OK. so. Here is our code for this method. Um, so once again, remember you need that starter code. So public int get player to move, int result, and then at the very end, we're gonna return result. So uh, this method is actually gonna be a little bit shorter, um, but we're gonna base it on those rules. So let's get those rules. Uh, if round is divisible by three, then return three. So if round is, so round mod three um, is how we say is divisible. Round mod three equals equals zero. So if that's the case, then we're going to have result be three coins. If round is not divisible by three, but is divisible by two, then return two. Uh, so we can do this a couple different ways. So I did one if statement um, that contains an else if and an else, uh, but you could say, just this. If round mod three is equal to zero, uh, then result equals three. And then your next if statement, so a brand new one not connected to this one, could say if round mod three is not divisible by zero and is divisible by two, uh, then return two. Uh, but I just put it all into one if else. Uh, it's a little bit more efficient. So, um, so if this is not the case, um, then it's going to come down and check this else if. So if this is not the case, but this is the case, right? Round mod two uh, is divisible by two. Uh, then our result is going to equal two. Or else if both of those things are not the case, right? Not divisible by three, not divisible by two. Then we are going to have it return one. And so then my if, my if else if statement ends. 
And the last thing I'm going to do is return that result. So whether it's three, two, or one, it'll return whatever number that is. And that is all the code you need for part A. So everything from here to here is part A. Now, if we look back at our directions for part B, it says, now we're going to write the method of play game, which is basically our runner class um, or the main class that's going to do everything else. Um, but it's in a method inside this other class. So we're going to write the method play game, which simulates a game between player one and player two uh, based on the rules above. Um, so let's get started, right? Both player one and player two start with the game with starting coins. So the very first line of my code uh, for this part is going to be, I'm going to create this int P1 for player one, and they're going to start with the starting coins. Um, and I'm going to do the same for player two. All right, it then says computer player one spends one, two, or three based on the value returned by the method get player one move. Um, so I'm not actually gonna do that yet, but I am gonna create the two variables, um, int p1 move and int p2 move uh, so that we know, so, so this will be, so p1 will be the total amount of coins they have left um, and p1 move will be the total amount of coins in the round that they're spending, so that they're choosing one, two, or three. Um, and then the last thing I need here is I need to know what round it is. So obviously we will start the game in round one. Uh, once again, be careful. We're not starting in round zero. Um, that doesn't really make sense for a game, um, but we are going to be starting in round one here. All right. So then we have, um, once again, I'm going to get back to these couple sentences right here. Um, so let's talk about this here, right? The game ends when max rounds rounds have been played or when a player's coin count is less than three at the end of the round. So I'm going to use a while loop here and I am going to bring it back up here and say while a round is less than or equal to max rounds. Uh, so that means that we're playing here and we have not exceeded the amount of rounds. Um, it's okay to play round five when max rounds is round five. Okay, so it can be equal. So while this is true, and our player one uh, bank account or amount of coins that they have is greater than or equal to three, and our player two coin amount is greater than or equal to three, right? All three of those things have to be true. Um, as soon as one of them is not true, uh, then our game will be over. So assuming those are true, we are going to uh, start the game. And we're first going to decide how many coins player one is going to spend. Um, and we're going to do that based on the get player one move, which brings us back to these directions. Uh, computer player one spends one, two, or three coins based on the value returned by the method get player one move. Now, we don't know exactly what this method is or how this actually works. Um, but we don't need to. We just need to know that it works so that we can call that method um, and it's good to go. Uh, the problem here is we aren't going to be able to test our code on our own, um, but that's okay because this is an AP question and typically on the AP exam, you wouldn't be able to compile code anyway. Um, and then the next thing says player two will be based on get player two move. Um, the thing you got to be careful here though is if we look at our class, um, get player one move, does not have any parameters in the parentheses here. So you got to make sure that's blank. But if we look at get player two move, we do have a parameter. It takes the round. Um, so it's important that we send the round to our, to our method um, there. That's definitely going to be something that they're going to check for, and you're going to lose a point um, if you have something here or if you don't have something here, you're going to lose points. So you want to make sure that the first one is blank and the second one is round. Um, I will admit when I coded this the first time, um, I did not have the word round there. So I did make that mistake. So it's a very easy one to make. Um, at that point, uh, you want to then move on to what happens um, based on those player two moves. Um, so we go back up to here based on our rules of what's gonna happen. Now I kind of split it up a little bit. Um, I said instantly, um, that we're going to subtract player one's spending um, from the player one total right away. Um, and player two, same way. I'm going to subtract it right away. Um, we could 
take these two lines of code and kind of put them into our rule uh, if statement. Um, but for me, it was just easier to just do it right away, right? Player one spends that amount of money, so we're just going to deduct it from the total right away. Um, and then we get our if statement with our rules. So the first rule is the same rule. So if player one move is equal to player two move, uh, player two gains one coin. So P2 plus plus um, or plus equals one. Um, and that might even be a better way of doing it just because um, that looks a little bit nicer to match the rule. But either one of those things do the same thing. So plus plus or plus equals. Um, else if, uh, remember I said the absolute value here is going to be important. So uh, math.abs p1 move minus p2 moves. Um, so it's going to subtract that. And if that, that positive difference is equal to one, um, then player two is going to earn one coin. Uh, another way of writing this is you could say P1 minus P1 move minus P2 move equals one equals equals one or P1 move minus P2 move equals equals negative one. So you could have done a or statement there if you wanted to, um, but math.abs is definitely what the question was hoping you would do by stating positive difference. Um, so if the difference is one, then you will put uh, player two gains one um, or else. Uh, and we could have done the same kind of thing here, math.abs uh, p1 move minus p2 move equals equals two. Um, but there is no other scenario, so we can just say else. Um, and at this time, player one is going to gain two coins, so plus equals two. Uh, so that's going to be what happens in our while loop for each round of the game. Um, and then at the very end of the round, we will increment our round variable there so that the round increases. Um, and that brings us to the end of our while loop, um, which you can see here, which then is going to check, okay, have we exceeded the amount of rounds um, and are player one and player two still have enough money to continue the game? Um, so as long as we are okay with all three of those checks, we'll play another round and that code will repeat um, until the game is over for whatever reason, whichever one of those things trigger, whether it's, uh, max rounds have been met, um, or player one or player two falls below three. And once it is, then we need to go back to our directions. All right, back down here. So at the end of the game, um, the winner will be determined according to the following rules. So if both players have the same amount of coins at the end of the game, uh, the method is going to print, okay, keyword there, print, uh, tie game. So if we bring back the code, we have our if statement that is outside of the while loop. Obviously, we don't want to print this every single time. Um, but if P1, so P1's total is equal to P2's total, we're going to print tie game. Okay. Um, continuing on with our directions over here, if player one has more coins than player two, we print player one wins. Okay, so that brings me to the else if. So if P1 is greater than P2, then player one wins um, and else player two wins, right? I could have had this be an else if that said P2 is less than, I'm sorry, P2 is greater than P1. Uh, that's fine. It's just unnecessary um, to state it because the only other thing that can happen, right? You either have a tie game, you have player one wins, or you have player two wins. There's no other options there. Um, so we can just use it as an else, player two wins. And that's it. That's the, that's the whole method. So um, I will blow this up and then I will zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole method on screen, the play games, uh, play game method there. So that's a lot of code. Um, that one was definitely tricky, um, but hopefully you were able to break it into different parts and get that um, and get kind of all the pieces that you needed to lined up for that one. Um, and typically these AP Classroom questions are about there's four parts to them, three or four parts. Um, so this one did only have two parts because that second part was so long. Um, but the the first question there was a good, you know, is, the, is your typical type of size of an FRQ question. Um, so make sure you're prepared for this. A total FRQ um, question, there's four on the test. You've got 90 minutes for the, FR, uh, for the AP exam. So this is not the final. The final would be much, much, much shorter. Um, like I said, it should take around 50 minutes. 
um, will not have a crazy problem like this one, I promise you. Um, but you need to make sure that you're able to do something like this for sure.